Hey folks, welcome to the 2022 Fiesta Days Spike Ball Tournament. Super excited to get you covered to this. I'm Andrew LaRose. It's uh, not not the most beautiful evening tonight, as uh, you see off in the distance some pretty uh, pretty crazy clouds out there. But uh, it's clear enough here in Spanish Fork that uh, we're we're going to be playing some spike ball tonight. Hopefully that uh, weather just kind of keeps flying, uh, you know, north and east of us, and uh, we don't uh, run into too much weather here. There's a little bit of little bit of sprinkling here, but uh, it's uh, it's been pretty again pretty solid enough that I'm feeling pretty comfortable that we're going to get in all of the games here. So uh, right now we're looking at a, a pool play matchup here in the intermediate division. It is the team Vogelsberg versus Stauffer. And uh, let's let's go over some of the, the rules here with the, the tournament here. So in pool play, the top two teams in your pool advance onto bracket play, which uh, we did just see a forfeit in the first game. That was uh, Anderson versus, if I can get my schedule to, it was uh, Anderson versus Lords. Lords uh, is not going to be showing up today is uh, what it sounded like. And so it's uh, an automatic forfeit for them. So Anderson getting the, the automatic dub in uh, the first game of pool play here for them. So it's Anderson, Vogelsberg, and Stauffer that will be going at it. Uh, here in uh, this particular spot in the intermediate division. Uh, the other three pools in intermediate include Wilson, Larson, Rushton, and Olsen. We'll be going up against each other and I've got Crow, Mortimer, Thompson, and Leafson, Leafson in uh, that other pool. And again, it's the top two teams in each of the the pools that will move on to bracket play and then hopefully be able to move on and be crowned the 2022 spike ball tournament champion in each of their respective divisions. And uh, let's go over kind of how the game is gonna go. So it's a best of three match and uh, they go to 15, but if they're tied or close at 15, they will continue play, but until 17, it's just whoever then gets to 17 is crowned the victor of that particular game. And again, it is best of three in terms of the matchup. And so we're kind of just jumping right into to action here with, uh, again, this particular pool play game. Again, it is uh, Stauffer versus Vogelsberg. And uh, unfortunately, because I'm, I wasn't quite, we weren't quite sure when they actually started the particular game. Haven't uh, haven't heard the score, but uh, we'll just uh, give you some give you some play by play, give you some uh, commentary on how I think they're doing right now. I've, as we've been watching, both teams pretty solid. I uh, want to remind you kind of a little bit as well as we're talking about kind of the rules here of spike ball. So it's kind of similar to to volleyball in the sense of your you kind of get three hits as a team to be able to then hit it onto the net. Unlike in volleyball where you're wanting to you know, hit away from the net, in spike ball you're actually wanting to hit the net to be able to then send it off to the other team. And there's definitely some uh, kind of similar strategies to volleyball in the sense if you want to kind of, that second hit tends to be kind of a setup for your teammate to be able to get a nice hit on the net as you just saw there. You know, there'll be a lot of times where it's just kind of a little little touch right near the net that then allows your your teammate to be able to throw it down and uh, get a nice spike on it. And then sometimes you're just, you're just kind of diving for your life and it's just a matter of getting a dig and just kind of putting it close to the net for your teammate. But uh, as you also see, positioning is super important here in spike ball. Um, you want to be able to position it in a place where you can find some nice green grass and hit it completely away from the other team. And so um, obviously you don't want, you cannot run into the, the opposition or intentionally box them out. So obviously you need to be mindful of the spacing that way. And uh, when you start, you actually start next to each other. So I've been told that the score is is six to two, which is awesome. The team that is currently, one of the teams that's currently on, I wanna say that it's Stauffer, is the uh, the reigning intermediate champion. So we're, uh, we're seeing some high quality spike ball here for this uh, first game that you get to see here of the, the Fiesta Days tournament. So that's pretty cool, definitely, definitely love that. And uh, yeah, as I've been saying, like the skill level four intermediate, pretty, pretty solid. Um, I've done some beginner games before and those are always fun, just kind of seeing just kind of the, the normal people coming in and just kind of playing whatever. But uh, intermediate kind of is a nice step up from that. And then we've had in the past some advanced ones where, heck, ah, 
a couple of years ago, we had a, a literal pro team that was here that was just uh, here to kind of goof off and uh, kind of get them some get themselves some practice and get into a tournament that kind of would then count towards uh, the amount of number of times that they they played throughout the season so they could qualify for other big tournaments. Uh, that that team was absolutely nuts. Um, and you see some of the skill that, that comes with that. Uh, again, Stoffer kind of the good example of that. You've, we've seen some kind of sets, uh, not sets, but serves that have looked a little bit different, kind of this like kind of backhanded kind of serve that uh, is put on. Another one is just kind of this just basically fastball. Um, kind of fun, but you want to make sure that you actually get it on the net. See, there we go. There's a perfect example of why positioning is so important. It does a nice job of getting himself in a place where he can throw down a nice lefty spike completely away from the other team. So yeah, seeing some nice, good quality spike ball here to start things off here in this Fiesta Days tournament. Anderson and Stauffer both looking like pretty, pretty awesome opponents. That's a fantastic dig. Does not get it up and over, but uh, oh, that one going for a kill shot there on the second hit, but uh, ends up missing the trampoline. Of course, spike ball happening right now, but along with that, we also do have a, a cornhole tournament that's happening over on the uh, the field next to us, and uh, that one is an absolutely rocking good time. That's uh, a thing that started up last year and uh, has continued to remain popular. I'm just looking over there at the other field, and holy crap, there are so many people over there for the for the cornhole tournament, and uh, it's uh, cornhole's a good time, so I, I definitely understand it, but uh, love that people are still here doing spike ball as well. This is, uh, I want to say the, certainly I think it's the fourth year I've covered the, the spike ball tournament. I want to say that this is the fifth total that they've done. And uh, again, it's, it's always a blast, it's always fun. And uh, what I like about this tournament is, and also cornhole as well, is these are kind of, you know, different sports. People that, you know, you don't necessarily usually see these types of tournaments when you're going to like steel days or strawberry days up in Pleasant Grove or like summer fest. You don't see these like kind of novelty sport tournaments that you do. You see, you know, softball, you see pickleball, tennis tournaments, volleyball tournaments, but uh, really cool that Fiesta Days offers these uh, these kind of cooler ones, kind of different ones with spike ball and with cornhole tonight. And uh, of course, the the crown jewel of Fiesta Days, of course, is coming up next week. The Fiesta Days Rodeo is always a blast. Hopefully you've already gotten your tickets for that. It'll be the 20th through the 25th. And uh, that's always a fun time, always enjoy going to that, seeing the barrel race and seeing the, the Buck and Bronx and all the fun stuff that comes with the rodeo. So again, make sure that uh, you've, you've gotten your tickets for that because uh, it sells out pretty quick. In fact, it probably already is sold out. So if uh, you haven't gotten your tickets, you're probably SOL. But uh, you can still go check out the website and see if uh, see if there's still some tickets available. But uh, again, let's uh, let's look back in on, on this uh, pool play game here. Again, this is the, the second game of this particular pool play. We've got the uh, Vogelsbergs versus the Stoffers again. The Stoffers, the reigning champions in intermediate, and so we're already seeing like the the top team, at least the favorites coming into uh, the tournament here this year, at least in this intermediate division. So it looks like we do have uh, they're all wrapped up here, at least with uh, game one here. Stoffer taking the victory here. Yeah, definitely putting up a, a nice fight was was Vogelsberg, but uh, again, Stoffer just just super talented. You definitely can tell that the guys have have played pretty well with each other for quite a while, and so nice skill level. Looks like they're talking things over. Okay, now there's been a little intermission. Game one does, in fact, like I said, go to Stoffer, and they will reset here for. Game two, again, best of three here in pool play. Again, they go to 15, so starting things off, 0-0. Zero, zero. Stoffer with a nice slam, but dug up nicely by Vogelsberg. Goes for what would have been a pretty nice slam, but ends up hitting the side of the trampoline, so. 1-0 point here for Stoffer. Again, teams getting introduced to each other. 
going by the, the first name basis because uh, everyone's team, which I always find boring, and I've talked about this uh, like basically every, <laughs> every spike ball tournament. It's like they just name them as their last name. They just like submit a last name. It's like, yeah, that's the team name. And I'm like, well, isn't that lame? Like, why can't we come up with like, like sweet team names, you know? But, you know, is, is what is. And usually when, when we do our interviews at the end, I'll usually ask them, okay, like, obviously your team name is, like, your last name, but, like, would you give yourself a name, and if so, what would it be? And then I then try to, as I see them throughout the rest of the tournament, we'll use the fun name as opposed to just our last name. So we'll stop her with possession once again here on the serve. Fantastic serve. I love that. That particular serve is real nice because it just has this nice kind of slight kind of slider effect to it. And I think here he might go for that. There it is, that nice backhand. Um, it'll end up being a fault and he'll probably go for the easier serve, which he does. Good setup there by Vogelsberg, but dug up nicely by Stoffer. Goes big, but ends up hitting the side. Solid placement, good slam, and kind of gets a little a little bit of, of fortune there with the, the bounce off the trampoline. Solid serve there by Vogelsberg. Oh, fantastic dig. Good placement there on that second hit, but if it does hit the trampoline twice, it is no good. The point will go to Stauffer on that one. Oh, nice fake out there with the, with the serve. Unfortunately for him, it does hit a pocket, so it will be a fault and he will serve again. But love the, love the idea there, throwing the changeup with the lefty. And uh, also really love that dig. Love being able to just throw up the chest and uh, get a hit on it. Fortunately, it does make it a little bit hard to, to direct it. Big serve, but uh, off the rim, so set up. Oh, that was a nice dig and also pretty nice flip up there for that second hit, but just a bit out of reach. Solid serve into the rim, so fault and reserve. Oh, tricked him out. Was going to show setup with that uh, third hit. Oh, off the off the hip there. Gotta love that kind of little El Dorado action. Getting it, getting it off the hip. So again, hope that you're hope that you're enjoying Fiesta Days and that this is just one of the several events that you've been able to tune into here on Spanish Fork 17. Uh, we did the softball tournament last week. That was. Uh, a fun one ended up uh, coming down to a, a, a second uh, second championship game, which you don't usually see very often. But uh, team able to, to rally from the losers bracket won the first game of the championship round, but then uh, unfortunately then just kind of got creamed in in game two. Kind of felt like a formality at that point. The uh, winning team ending up putting up I want to say 23 23 runs in one inning. It was. Uh, it was unpleasant to watch in terms of if you were a fan of the other team. Uh, it was an absolutely beautiful display of offense. Um, the key for them was honestly, they were hitting dingers in the previous game, but a lot of those dingers ended up going as outs. And so there was a clear approach of like, hey, let's uh, maybe you know just hit some line drives and some grounders and uh, force the defense to play. And it, it worked out nicely for them. Tons of runs and then ran away with the victory. So hopefully you were able to tune in for that and uh, you're enjoying the spike ball tournament so far, and we'll be sticking with this here for, you know, the, the rest of the evening here as we give you uh, nice coverage of the intermediate pool play, and, uh, and we'll get you a good coverage of, of bracket play once that rolls around as well. Uh, other events, again, like I said, cornhole going on um, over in the, the field next to us. Uh, alongside the uh, softball tournament, there was pickleball as well, so hopefully you also got to enjoy some of that. Um, I am a huge fan of pickleball and uh, I definitely understand why it's kind of become this big popular sport. It's kind of a, a poor man's tennis, but also like a, a basically a, a live version of, you know, table tennis. You're just actually like, you know, using a bigger field. So it's a, it's a kind of fun mix and it requires, you know, an amount of athleticism, but also just really requires a lot of skill and kind of knowing where to play stuff. And so hopefully you're uh, Either we're playing pickleball yourself or we're able to enjoy some of that. And uh, we are, I think, getting fairly close here to uh, wrapping up here in game two of 
this particular pool play matchup. Great setup there by Stauffer, but dug up nicely by Vogelsberg. Wow, fantastic, but uh, again, unable to really make solid contact there on that second hit. Great serve there from Vogelsberg. Big slam and goes right past my shoulder here for another point there for Stauffer. Does look like we're finally getting some nice sunshine. Maybe starting to, to peek out a little bit here. We're also starting to get kind of towards the, the twilight hours. My goodness, what a hit. Love that. Dives down, sweeps with that, that left hand to be able to, to get it on the trampoline. That is high level quality spike ball. Absolutely love that. Goes for the slam, works perfectly. Could I have reached to grab it? Eh, I might have, but uh, you know, I don't need to be that involved. Okay, score is 12-14, just heard that. Gotta try to listen in and give you a little bit of the actual play-by-play -play here. Kind of just been going over what's been going on here with Fiesta Days. That's a solid hit there for Vogelsberg and uh, they are gonna take game two. Looks like they will head back over to take a quick intermission here between game two and game three. Game three will be a winner take all here in this pool play. Stauffer taking game one, Vogelsberg taking game two in very impressive fashion. Um, again, Stauffer coming in as the favorite here in the intermediate division as the reigning champions. So uh, I love that Vogelsberg has worked their way into forcing this winner take all game three here in this pool play matchup and we'll set them up nicely for a bracket play and uh, give them some confidence. Because again, this is a really solid squad that they're kind of facing off with. So 0-0 zero, zero here in game three. It'll be Stauffer to lead things off. Great setup, but excellent dig. Goes for the slam. Unfortunately for them, does not work well. Oh, that is fantastic. See, that is beautiful. I, I guess you'd call it field awareness because we're not on a court. I wanted to say court awareness, but uh, we're, you know, in grass and there aren't a lot of grass courts unless you're playing tennis. So we'll say we'll say field awareness there. As a, with hit number two, generally you want to try to set up your set up your teammate, but in this case, he just saw that the the other team was completely away from where he would be able to slam it. So it's like, oh, you know what? Boom, opportunity. And uh, starting off nicely here, 2-0 is Stauffer. Lil Long on the serve. Good placement, nice thought there. But uh, great, great positioning once again there by, by Stauffer. And really the, the key to kind of stepping up your game with spike ball is just, it is, it's a lot about the awareness. There's a lot of skill stuff that comes in with spike ball and being able to, you know, get, get good digs and kind of have some awareness with your teammate and that connection with your teammate is very important. But uh, really it is, it's just about the awareness of understanding, okay, where am I at? Where can I hit the ball? And <laughs> basically how can I get it as far away from the other team as possible? And uh, just not being not being stuck in one position that like constantly rotating is gonna gonna definitely help you out and that is a perfect example of that as Vogelsberg was able to rotate quite nicely there to keep themselves in that point but uh, Stauffer again doing a great job to get themselves a place where uh, they could at least get it on the trampoline looks like it did hit pocket there they did call that so point there for Vogelsberg Good setup, solid slam, but dug up nicely. Pops it up, big slam, gets it up and over. Not a, not a strategy that you uh, usually want to try to deploy in spike ball, but kind of sometimes the trampoline dictates that you maybe do just want to just slam it down, try to get it up and over, as opposed to finding a direction on it. So worked out nicely there for, for Vogelsberg. Fault in a, a reserve. Tricky second hit gets uh, Vogelsberg out of system there and gets Stauffer the serve once again. Trying to go angle there. We'll get a reserve and it'll be a double fault. Tough break there for Stauffer. Solid serve by Vogelsberg. 
Solid tap shot there. And that's that's a key thing too, is kind of a change of pace, change of direction there with your hits. Um, I think that oftentimes people just think you just gotta pound it in at you know, 80 miles an hour and uh, that's gonna be the thing that's uh, gonna get you the victory every time. But I like that they've done a good job of throwing in some change ups there, throwing in the off speed hits there and uh, angling it quite nicely. Oof, that would have been an absolutely beautiful dig. Said it'll be a point for Vogelsberg. Good pop up, nice setup, great direction. Gets up. Oh, that also would have been sensational. Still, the athleticism just to be able to get back over to get that third hit was impressive. Just needed a little bit more on it. They get themselves in in system there, but uh, just a bit off on the the tap shot. Stoffer continues to roll here. Are feeling a, a little bit of, of raindrops falling down. The sun is out though, so hoping that uh, all these, these crazy rain clouds that are heading up northeast can continue to, to head that direction. And uh, you know, they can they can pound Salt Lake County all they want. If they could keep Utah County dry, that would be fantastic. Oh man, that's some sensational spike ball right there. Be able to get that dig stuffer with a solid hit, but ends up hitting pocket. So Vogelsberg with the point after the very nice rally again. You're seeing some really nice play here to start things off in uh, the 2022 Fiesta Day Spike Ball Tournament. Love being able to get you coverage of this here tonight as part of, again, all of the stuff that we're doing here with Fiesta Days. Good setup and nice backhand hit. Good pop up, goes with the left, dug up, and then there it is. All about that field awareness. Knowing where to get it, taps it down nicely, and Stoffer will get possession again. I heard that Stoffer's at 10 and Vogelsberg at 6. Good dig. Solid slam. That is a picture perfect play there for Stoffer. And along with Fiesta Days, we hope that uh, hope that you enjoyed your Independence Day weekend as well. Know that that's a little bit, you know, back in the past, but uh, hope that you uh, were able to see some some great fireworks and uh, maybe put some food on the grill and just just enjoyed celebrating America's independence. And that was just a sensational hit. Vogelsberg will get the serve once again on just an absolutely nasty hit there by the. Guy in the Nike shirt. Off the rim, we'll get to reset here, reserve. Good setup, nice slam. Heading right at our camera. Love that. So we do have to get a little bit involved. So Stoffer back with the serve once again. Do have a nice little crowd here for this uh, this particular pool play matchup. Definitely love having having a crowd here for, uh, for the teams, you know, being able to support the boys and uh, help them out here. As again, both teams pretty solid. Uh, I definitely think that both of these teams have a shot at uh, taking the intermediate division. Obviously, Stauffer being the reigning champions from last year, so they for sure absolutely have a shot. But I've been impressed with the skill level of Vogelsberg as well. So I think that they've got a pretty solid shot here too. So I'm hearing 9-13, so Stauffer pretty close here to getting the victory in uh, game three. That's a fantastic hit. Good recovery there by Vogelsberg. Now getting themselves in system nicely. Solid slam, but trampoline not very forgiving on that one. Good job. Solid lefty. Again, good setup there. Oh, that's that's a dirty shot there by, by Stoffer. Again, I'm telling you, it's all about just that awareness. Just a nice little tap shot well away from the other team. This is a match point here. Brings out the, the big guns there with the Kind of backhanded serve, and that's going to be it for this particular pool play matchup. Stoffer taking it two to one. Again, Vogelsberg making it interesting, uh, taking game two. But uh, again, the the skill level and kind of the the teammate communication of Stoffer kind of winning the day there on uh, this particular intermediate pool play game. We'll get you more coverage here of the next one coming up, and uh, hopefully we'll have some time here to maybe to be able to do an interview here with the winning team. <laughs> 